Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Tanmay Sakpal and I'm back with another video tutorial on Digital Electronics, Boolean Algebra and Logic Gates. So in this video tutorial, we'll be discussing the topic of Hamming Code and we'll understand what is Hamming Code and how it helps in error detection as well as correction. And we'll also solve a numerical wherein we'll perform the error detection as well as the correction. So with that being said, let's get started with today's topic. So Hamming Code was invented by a person named Richard Hamming and it was invented in 1950s. So just a little bit background history about Hamming Code and Hamming Code technique is used for error detection as well as correction and in this video tutorial we'll be dealing with a 7-bit Hamming code okay because it is most commonly used in error detection and error correction okay so what exactly is Hamming code and how does it help so we'll be solving an example and then you'll understand exactly how it is helpful in error detection as well as correction so the best way to understand this is to take a practical example so you can see a question I can I have written it over here so the question is as follows generate a 7-bit Hamming code using even parity for the data block 1011 okay so some terms might be a little new for you for example this parity concept now i have talked about what is parity in digital electronics and you can see a video on the top right corner which is dedicated for parity so if you don't know what this means you can just check that video apart from that basically what happens is whenever a transmission happens from a to b say for example a is at a particular location and a is a computer from where data is being transferred in digital format so 1010 so it's all binary right and it's being transferred to location b which is another computer at a different station over the internet or over the any network so what happens is sometimes these bits get corrupted so if a is sending 101101 b might receive 111101 so what happens is here this this bit got flipped right so this bit got corrupted and it got changed to a 1 or vice versa can also happen and it might be the case where multiple bits get corrupted. So what happens or how to avoid this kind of scenario? So Hamming code helps us to detect which bit has been changed and it also helps in correction. So now let's see how this scenario can be prevented and how we can detect errors and correct the errors in these binary codes. Okay. So that's what the question is all about. So for starters, you need to understand that when we are generating a Hamming code, there are two terms that we need to understand. The first one is the data bits which in this case are these four data bits 1011 and the second is you need to understand the parity bits okay and for a 4 bit data transmission you require 3 parity bits so what happens is the data bits plus the parity bits together are being transmitted over the network so what we do is we first calculate the parity bits we combine it with the data bits in a particular format and then transmit it to the receiver and then receiver checks those parity bits and then he understands how is there an error or do we need to correct it so the parity bits are calculated and placed in such a way that there is a particular location at which the parity bits need to be inserted so you can see this is a 7 bit Hamming code this is a 7 bit Hamming code and here you can see we have p1 p2 and p3 so these are the parity bits and then d0 d1 d2 and d3 in blue are the data bits so location number 1 2 and 4 are the parity bits so you must be wondering okay how did this location arrive and how do we know where to exactly place this parity bits along with the data bits right so there is a formula and the formula is that every 2 raised to nth location is a parity bit or every 2 raised to nth location is the place where we are supposed to insert a parity bit so starting from 2 raised to 0 which is equal to 1 so the first cell has to be a parity bit then we can see 2 raised to 1 which is equal to 2 so the second location is also going to a parity bit then we have 2 raised to 2 which is equal to 4 so the fourth location has to be a parity bit and then for 2 raised to 3 you can see that we have the answer 8 but now you can see we only have 7 places because we are calculating a 7 bit Hamming code so the parity bit would have been over here if the data would have been a little more, little more longer than this but since we have a 4 bit data we don't need to include P4 or parity bit 4 3 parity bits are enough to perform error detection and correction on a 4 bit data code okay so keep this in mind that every 2 raised to nth location is a parity bit. Okay, so this is the placement of the parity bit and the rest all locations are to be allocated to the data bit in the proper order, right? So let's start off with the question. We have been given the data as 1011. So I'll just first write down the data 101 and 1 in the location where we have to insert the data and you can see P3, P2 and P1 are being kept as it is. So now we have to calculate parity and we have to calculate individual parity values for these three different parity bits. So how do we calculate that? 
Now there is a predefined way to go about this and this is given by Hamming itself that is Richard Hamming who invented the Hamming code he has defined it. So for P1 that is this this bit we have to take into consideration 3, 5 and 7 position and we have to compare these. Now in the question let me just repeat the question generate a 7 bit Hamming code using even parity. So even parity and odd parity was again the concept that we have seen in that video where uh, which I told you just about this or just before this wherein we totally covered the concept concept of parity and even and odd parity schemes. So I'll tell you what it is in a minute. So in this question we are supposed to be using even parity okay. So for P1 we have to see location of 3, 5 and 7 in the code. So the that location is this 3, 5 and 7. So let's just calculate that. So I'll write down P1 the locations are supposed to be 3, 5, 7. Now this is predefined okay. You have to follow this as it is 3, 5 and 7. So checking the data for 3 we have 1 then for 5 we have again 1 and again for 7 we have 1. So now we are using even parity right. Now the number of digits that are high or the number of digits that are 1 is 3 right and 3 is odd and since we are using even parity the parity bit P1 has to be 1 so that the total number of bits for P1 or this for these 3 values becomes even. So here it has to be 1. Now let's calculate P2. So P2 is concerned with 3, 6 and 7. So 3, 6, 7. Let's see what are the values at these locations. So 3 is 1. So at uh, location number 3 we have 1. Then at location number 6 we have 0 and location number 7 we have 1. So the number of bits that are high or that the number of bits that are 1 is 2 which is even. So we keep the P2 bit as 0. So again we have to write a P2 0. And lastly we have to calculate P3. So P3 is for 5, 6 and 7 over here. So 5, 6 and 7. Again see the numbers which are there at 5, 6 and 7 which is 101. One. Again the number of bits that are high is 2 which is again even. And since we are using even parity we don't need to add one more one. We just have to keep the parity bit as 0. So we write down 0 over here. So now we have calculated the three different parity bits and this is the final answer or this is the 7 bit Hamming code which corresponds to 1011 when we use even parity. So for a sender A what happens is he takes this 1011 he applies Hamming code that is 7 bit Hamming code using even parity okay he applies that. And then he gets an output of 101. This is 1010101. And this he sends it over the internet to B. Okay. And B is another receiver. So A is the sender over here. A is a computer or A is a node on the network. He is the sender and he is the receiver. So I'm denoting receiver by Rx and sender or transmitter can be denoted as Tx. So part one is done that is we just calculated the Hamming code and then A sent that entire 7 bit Hamming code over the internet or over the network to B. Now what happens if the data gets corrupted. So in transit when the data was being transmitted over here on the internet let's say that this 0 got converted to a 1. So the actual data that was transmitted over the internet was 1 1 1 0 1 0 1. So instead of this 0 it got flipped and it got corrupted and the actual data that was transferred was 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 instead of 1 0 1 0 1 0 1. Okay. So now what the receiver has got is this value. So now the receiver has to perform error detection and correction. So let's see how he does that. Let me just scroll a little bit down. So let me just write down what the receiver has got. So the receiver instead of getting 1010101 he has got 11101101. So instead of this value 0 he got it flipped as 1. Now he's going to perform error detection and correction okay. So again let me just first draw the 7 blocks wherein we'll write down this binary code. Okay, so I have written down the number triple one zero one zero one and you can see I have marked the one which is an error code by red. So this is the faulty number or faulty bit but the receiver still doesn't know it. So he's going to find out by using the error detection by Hamming code itself. So now the receiver already knows that it the sender has used a 7 bit Hamming code. Okay. So he knows that out of these 7 bits only 4 bit are going to be the data and he already knows these positions that is D0, D1, D2 and D3. So he knows the data that he's received is actually 4 times 1 but he still doesn't know that this bit has to be 0 instead of 1. So he's going to find that out. So let's see how he finds that out. Now again he is going to take the parity bits to check this and to verify this. 
So again, what he is going to do is for P1, he knows he has to check 3, 5 and 7. So for P1, he has to check 3, 5 and 7. So he's like, okay, let me just check out 3rd, 5th and 7th position. So he knows at 3rd, 5th and position, he is received 3 times 1. And now he checks the value of P1. So value of P1 that he has received is 1. So this is what he's received. So he checks, okay, since it is even parity and the number of digits which are high at these three positions is three. Okay, so you can see all of these are high. That is three number or uh, three digits are high. So in order to make it even parity, we had to use this one. So he knows that, okay, so this is correct. That is P1 is one because it has to make it even. That is even number of ones should be high. That's why this is right. So no problem with P1. Now he checks P2. Okay, so P2, he knows the values are to be checked as three, six, seven. So so 3 comma 6 comma 7 so at 3 we have 1 at 6 we have that error or flipped bit so it is 1 over here which he has received and at 7 we have again 1 so now he checks the parity bit that he has received and the parity bit over here is 0 so now he wonders okay even while it is an even parity and you can see that odd number of inputs or odd number of bits are high that is 3 which is odd so he wonders still why the parity bit is 0 so now he understands that okay there is some issue over here so p2 is an issue so he still doesn't know which of the bit is having an issue out of the three so out of three six and seven he still doesn't know that which of the bit is flipped or which of, which bit has an error but he knows that there is some error going on so this is where he has already detected or performed error detection using hamming code now he checks for p3 okay so for p3 we have to check five six and seven so five six and seven so five six and seven has again triple one and again at the sixth position we got that flipped bit which is the error bit and he again checks for p3 parity and you can see again parity is zero so again odd number of digits are high which is odd and we are using even parity right so this had to be one so he again finds that out that again there is an issue with p3 okay so now he's figured out that there is some bit which has an error and he knows that there is an issue with the data so how do we perform error correction now so we have performed error detection already so error detection is done now what we need to do is error correction so for that what we have to do is we have to do a very important step so again the receiver goes through these parity bits and wherever he did not find any issue for example for p1 he saw the parity bit to be correct that is this one was right right so what he does is he assigns the parity bit as zero so just follow me here and i'll tell you why he does that because we'll get the location at which the bit has flipped out and where the error is exactly now he goes to p2 he sees that we have an issue at p2 so wherever there is an error or at wherever parity bit he finds that there is some issue he assigns that as one for p3 also he found out that there was some issue so he makes this zero as one and lastly what he does is he arranges this p1 p2 and p3 in this order so p1 p2 and p3 so p1 is zero he assigned this as zero p2 is one and p3 is one and this is in binary right so this is in binary so what we have to do is we have to convert this to decimal and the decimal version of 110 is 6 so this is equal to 6 in decimal now what we have got is the position where the bit has flipped or where the error has occurred so starting from 1 2 3 4 5 6 is the exact location where the error has occurred and you can see i have marked it in red so now the receiver knows that at sixth location the error has occurred which means that this one was supposed to be zero so he so so the receiver goes there and changes this and makes it a zero. So that's how you actually perform error detection as well as error correction. So the only important step in performing error correction was to remember that while we calculate parity and while we check the parity bits, wherever the parity bits are correct, we assign them as zero. Okay. And wherever the parity bit has some issue, for example, for P2 and P3, it should have been one right over here. So we assign them as one and this is for even parity okay so the receiver already knows that it is a seven bit hamming code using even parity so that is the prerequisite so this was the most crucial step in error correction and now we have got the correct hamming code with the data and the data is now corrected to 1011 so this is the actual data that was transmitted initially you can see this is the data that was actually generated 1011 and the receiver has now received 1011 by performing error detection and error correction using hamming code so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood how we can use hamming code to perform error detection and error correction and how the steps are to be performed 
So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you found this informational and helpful, share it with your friends as well so that even they understand this concept. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of informational technology oriented video tutorials on this channel and more are coming soon. So you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.